In this video, I'm going to show you the way I use Mac 3 Screen Editor to design a screen set to control my cabinet saw. Computer control of the fins and blade position would be a cool feature to have. And at the end, I will try to demonstrate the interface using my CNC laser engraver without having to build it into the saw at this time. Although such projects I will try to get done in the future. Therefore, the main intention of this video is to give you an idea of what is possible to do using Mac 3 Screen Editor version 1.7 to modify the regular 1024 set. If you find this video interesting, please give it a thumbs up, comment, and if you enjoy this kind of content, consider subscribing. Okay, so let's get to it. Notice that I got Windows XP running on VirtualBox. Now let me open Mac 3 Loader and open Mac 3. Very well. You can see the interface with the usual reset button flashing. And you can also see an LED blinking on top of the reference hold home button. Let me go ahead and reset. Before I reset the reference hold home button, let me show you that the three LEDs for the three axes, at this moment, all of them are red. So once I press the reference hold home button, all of those LEDs turn green, letting me know that the three different axes are referred to their limits. Coming the machine shall ensure they will have an accurate reading, that is, providing that the stepper motors won't skip a step. Okay, so let me press the reference hold home button. The program will immediately turn the LEDs green. However, when the machine is hooked up, the stepper motors will take some time to home. The important thing here is that the green LEDs indicate that the mechanism is calibrated to their mechanical limits. First of all, let me try to describe what's going on. This screen set and the picture that you see here is supposed to be my grizzly cabinet saw, or at least a representation of it. Let me describe the controls and what the buttons do. Notice that there are three digital readouts or DROs, one for each axis to control. The one on the left indicates the blade tilt, will move the blade from zero degrees or vertical to 45 degrees to the left, since this is a left tilting saw. The right upper DRO indicates the blade height and the arrow buttons control its movement. The right lower DRO indicates the fence position Again, the two arrow buttons control its movement. On the fence itself, I located the reference hold home button with a blinking LED if the machine needs to be referenced. The table casting homes the reset button, go to zero button, and the stop button. Down below is another DRO to select the distance. And to move such distance in increments when you activate the increments button to the right. When activated, the LED will turn on. At the center, the keyboard jack button with this LED is located. The text box below is a menu data input or MDI box. To the right of the MDI box, the continuous movement button with this LED are located. To the right of them, I added a fence part button to send the fence to the farthest position to the right to move it out of the way. I also eliminated most of the tabs on the program. I left only settings, diagnostics, and the MPG mode, which will be recalled using the tab key on the keyboard. Okay, let me use the screen by restarting the program. All right, opening the program, we see the blinking lights and the three axis LEDs turn red. Let me reset. So what happens when I activate the reference all home button? All of the axes go to their home position until the home limit switches are triggered, turning the LEDs green and setting the machine coordinates to zero. So let's say I want to make a 45 degree angle cut. I'm going to raise the blade to its maximum height of three inches. Then I'm going to set the fence at 12 inches. I can do this in three different ways. I can set up my increment DRO to add an inch Selecting the increment button when you press on the arrow several times until you reach the distance required. Let me try it. As you can see, this is kind of laborious. Other way you can do this is selecting the continuous mode and jog the different axes. But it's not going to stop at the exact place you want. The easiest way to do this is manually entering the commands. G0 is the code for rapid movement, so we enter it first to move the fence position. Enter X12. This will position the fence 12 inches from the blade. To move the blade height, enter Y3. This will raise the blade 3 inches. 
To move the blade tilt, enter Z45. This will tilt the blade by 45 degrees. If you enter G0, X12, Y3, Z45, all movements will happen at the same time. You can go back to zero, entering G0, X0, Y0, Z0, and press enter, or press the go to zero button. If you see something wrong with the machine while it's moving, you press the stop button to abort. If you need to deactivate the keyboard, press the jog switch. This will inhibit the keyboard entry. Doing this will turn both of the increments and continuous LEDs on, but you can still jog the machine pressing the arrow shape keys on the screen. However, the jogging action will depend on which button was active before you inhibited the jogging action on the keyboard. Notice that if I want to jog an axis to the limit, the jog will slow down to 20% of the maximum jog speed and stop at its limit. Also, if you want to jog past the upper or lower limit, the machine won't respond to the action due to the software limits being activated. If you open the settings page, you can see that the soft limit button LED is on. You can also see the machine coordinates as well if you press this button. Since I have software limits activated on the program, the machine knows what the maximum distances are allowed to move. You can see these settings on the configurations menu at the homing and limits window. All right, except for the glossy buttons and the cabinet saw graphic, I have not done any special modifications to the program or code. With the exception of the park button, which I programmed to execute a G code script. All I did is to rearrange and delete buttons and actions not needed for this specific function. To create the images, I used two different programs, GIMP and Krita. Both of these programs are free to use, although I have to say they have steep learning curves. I will put a link in the description if you decide to get them. Also, you will need Mac Screen Editor version 1.7 or higher. Link in the description. Let me show you a screenshot of the images I drew. This is GIMP. There are countless videos on how to create glossy buttons. This is Krita, a digital drawing program similar to Photoshop, where I created the saw image. Once you save the files to the folder in Mac 3, the images will be ready to be used on your screen. Let me open Mac screen. Right now, I have a copy of set 1024 open. Notice the page number selection here. You can jump to any page or delete a page here. Usually, persistent controls are located on page zero. I'm just going to show you a couple of substitutions on the screen. Jumping to page one and selecting the outer perimeter, this is the background main screen. Clicking twice on the image path will open the images folder named Meal Bitmaps. Funny that all image files are JPEGs and PNGs, not bitmaps or BMPs. If you switch to thumbnail view, you can see the images. Let me select Soul Controls 9. Now you see the Soul graphic as your main screen. Pressing the frame size button, you can select the aspect ratio of your window. I am going to jump to page 50. Here we see our MPG pendant. I am going to copy the push to jog button seen here as the X plus button. Let me jump back to page one and paste it here. I am going to use this button to control the fence movement to the right. Let's double click on the image path. Here I am going to select fence right button and click open. As you can see now, we have our own custom button. You can manipulate different parameters like size and position here as well as the properties of the selection here. Let me select an LED. I am going to grab the Z reference LED and select the path and look for my custom LED. Here it is. You might ask yourself how an image of an LED will turn on or off. It's actually pretty simple. The PNG image has to be drawn with an LED on at one side and off at the other side. 
separated by some distance as you see here. The program will shift the image some amount when activated, blinking or steady on, showing the left or right side of the PNG at one time. Also the program shrinks the button image by a small amount when clicked to give the illusion of pressing action. So you just keep doing the reordering of elements needed until you're satisfied. All right, enough of this. Here's the final screen with all the modifications on it. Regarding the part button, I selected the execute code function. And if we double click on the execute code parameter, a script editor pops out. I just enter the G0 or rapid movement code x52, which moves the x-axis 52 inches to the end of the salt table. So when you activate the button, the code is executed. Simple. To transfer the screen set, just copy it and transfer it to a thumb drive. However, you have to include any custom image files as well. Interrupt them into their appropriate folders, otherwise Mac 3 will be missing an image. Well guys, that's it. Let's try it on the machine. All right, I already have installed the files. So let's turn it on and open Mac 3. This is the CNC laser screen. Let me reset it. Go to view, load screens, 1024 copy. Now we see our table saw interface. At the moment, this is just to demonstrate that the stepper motors obey the commands, nothing more, nothing less. And that the limit switches will turn the LEDs green when homing. Okay, going to the settings page, we see that the software limits are active. If you activate the machine coordinates button, you will see the machine coordinates on the DROs. Opening the homing and limits window, you can see that I enter the limits to the maximums and minimums. So when I jack towards the limit, the axis stepper slows down to almost zero and stops at the limit. In this case, between zero and 52 for the X axis, between zero and 45 for the Y axis, and between zero and three for the Z axis. These are my table saw parameters. The blade goes up three inches, tilts 45 degrees, and the table saw extension is 52 inches. If I chuck the blade up or down all the way, it won't go past the limits. It will do this in all three axes. I'm going to use the MDI box, enter G0, X4, Y5, Z1.5, and press enter. Easy. Go to zero. Now, if we turn off the jack button, then the keyboard or joysticks in this case are inhibited, but we can still use the screen. If we select the increment jack button, it will move the distance indicated on the DRO. Let me enter 0.5 and press the fence button. It's there. If I choose the joystick, it adds another 0.5 to it. It does the same with all axes. Lastly, Pressing the park button will take the fence to X52. I don't have this distance here, so let me abort. Very well, this is basically how I create and test this screen set. Of course, you can create and modify your own if you wish to do so. Please leave any comments or questions below and I will try to answer any concerns with my limited knowledge of Mac Screen Editor. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you soon on my next video. Goodbye.